Good morning. And welcome to worship at Meadowbrook Congregational Church this Rally Sunday. I'm Pastor Joel Boyd, and I'm blessed to serve this church. A special welcome to any visitors joining us today, either here in person or joining us online. We're glad to have you with us today. You and your family are welcome to join in all of our ministries here at Meadowbrook. You can learn more about that by checking out our Facebook page, our website, or receiving our weekly messenger email. If you don't currently receive that, you can sign up through our website online or scan the QR code in Fellowship Hall after worship service. You could also fill out one of our welcome cards in the pew rack and put it in the offering plate later on in service so we can get to know you a little bit better. Well, friends, our Sunday school programming kicks off today. All kids and youth are invited to attend. Uh, youth are welcome to participate in worship, including our Sunday school moments, which we'll have today. And following that time, youth are released to our Sunday school classrooms. And note also that on the first Sunday of the month, from October through June, we hold our special all-family Sunday services. Now, these are special services when the liturgy uh, and the message, uh, a bunch of things are actually intentionally inclusive of all ages. Uh, we all participate in, in, in the message. Uh, it's a really a great time altogether. So youth are welcome and encouraged to participate in all family Sundays uh, where they can remain in the entire service with their families. So if you know kids or youth would like to uh, do something special on one of our All Family Sundays. Maybe you'd like to read or share a prayer or be part of music or, or dance or something else. Uh, please reach out to Colleen Foster or to myself. We'll be happy to get you connected. Well, at this time, I'd like to invite Sherilyn Foster Tucker and Colleen Foster to come forward to share with us a special announcement about Rally Sunday. Morning. morning. So following worship today, we will be having a picnic, and then it will be followed by our cornhole tournament. So you're all welcome to join us, and if you're interested in participating in the cornhole tournament, you definitely should because there is a huge prize at stake. <laughs> so make sure to sign up. There will be a sign-up sheet on a clipboard at one of the tables when you come in. And just make sure you sign up before you grab your hot dog because we're hoping to get started with the tournament at about 11.30. And please stay for lunch. We have a lot of hot dogs because ni neither one of us can do math very well, so there may be well over 100. And um, also we have a lot of desserts. So please stay for lunch and for cornhole. And I'm really hoping that Augie and Benj will partner up. That's what I've been hoping to see. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you to Colleen and to Sherilyn for organizing our Rally Sunday uh, this year. And thank you to all who brought in items uh, for us on our special day today. And uh, folks, note that this morning our special offering uh, for Rally Sunday has been designated by our trustees to go uh, towards our property so if you would like to give towards our special offering this morning, you could just list on the memo line of a check or an online gift special offering. Uh, for those uh, choosing to give to your annual pledge, you may continue to do so at that time. Well, friends, uh, if you haven't already done so, you can go ahead and still sign up for our upcoming blood drive to be held this Tuesday, September 10th. We'll be holding that at 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. in our fellowship hall. You can either sign up online uh, at redcrossblood.org, entering Meadowbrook in the sponsor code field, or you can catch Cal Riddell uh, during fellowship as well. Friends, Meadowbrook's open mic night will be held coming up in just a few short months on Friday, November 15th at 7.30 p.m., so mark your calendars, plan to join us. If you'd like to sing, to dance, to play an instrument, recite poetry, or share another special talent you have, well, go ahead and contact Steve Keller uh, no later than September 20th, earlier preferably, 
uh, and to get that on his radar. Uh, the time commitment is just one rehearsal and then the night of the show. We hope to see you there. Well, folks, if you or someone you know have been considering joining Meadowbrook Congregational Church, becoming a member here, or you'd like to learn more about our church or what it, what it looks like to be a congregationalist, well, we hold new member and intro to congregationalism discussions uh, for those who'd like to learn more about that. Uh, whether you're new to Meadowbrook or have been a longtime friend of the church, we'd love to welcome you uh, and your family into membership. So you could just reach out to me uh, or contact the office or, or let us know. We'd be happy to talk to you about that. All are welcome here at Meadowbrook. Well, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Let us now take a time to prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of our Lord. Please stand in body or spirit for the call to worship. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The, the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. May these words of our mouths and this meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and redeemer.
please join me in prayer? God of light and truth, you are beyond our grasp, yet always in our midst. With adorning love, we proclaim your glory and sing your praise. For you have shown us your truth and love in Jesus Christ. Be with us by the Spirit as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time, I'd like to invite any of our youth with us here today uh, to come forward, and if you have brought a backpack with you, to go on and bring that up, and if you did not bring a backpack today, or you're joining us online, no worries, or bless your backpack anyway. All right, guys, well, can we say a prayer over our backpacks and over the start of our school year for all of us? That includes all that we're learning. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for blessing us to be your people. We ask your blessing on us, all of us, our students, Lord. All of us are always learning uh, where you call us to be, to share your love in the world. Lord, we ask your blessing upon these backpacks here today and all of our backpacks on all of our students, all of our teachers, all of our staff, Lord, that we may be healthy, we may be safe, we may have a great time of learning together, uh, that we may value all of our special gifts and share them together in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, you can stay up here for Miss Colleen. Ha ha, you guys got here before me. All right. I'm puzzled. I didn't even ask the question yet. All right, so first of all, welcome to the 2024-2025 school year. I said to someone earlier, that doesn't even sound like a real date, a real year. Um, okay. So as Ben's already pointed out, what did I bring in? A puzzle. Yes. How many of you do puzzles? I love puzzles. All right. So I have all the pieces of a puzzle. What is the most important piece in this for this, for this puzzle? What do you think? The cor that is exactly what my mother would say. You have to find the corners first. But in reality, the corners, the sides, the middle, the prettiest, they're all pretty important, aren't they? Because if you're missing one of them, do you get the complete picture? No. All right. So they are all important. OK, keep that in mind. So our theme this year, because you know I always like to have a theme. If you saw the bulletin board when you walked in, did anyone notice it? 
That's okay. Okay, that's all right. It says, together we are one. And the verse is from Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Right? So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So there's, there's one body where, let's see, Clara, you have your body with your arms and your legs and all of that. But in this one, Paul, who wrote this verse, is talking about a larger body. You know what body that is? Earth? That's a good guess. Is, I don't know. I'm not sure. How about the God? That's always a good answer. But Paul is talking about the church. The church is the body of Christ. Have you heard that before? And guess what? All of you are part of that body, and everyone out there is part of that body. And we all bring something different to our church, don't we? We have different gifts, and we have different talents, even you guys, even them. And we're all essential. So we're kind of like this, this puzzle with all these pieces. We're just like pieces to the church. And we need all of us, don't we? So that's what we're going to be talking about over the next few months. But we'll get started today, but we're going to pray first. All right? So, dear God, thank you for making us part of your body. Help us to work together so that all parts of the body of Christ know your love. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and can be found in your pew Bibles in the New Testament section, page 229. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you, it is not they who drag you into the court. Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Danny, Dave, and our choir. It's great to have our choir back, right? Yeah. Well, friends, let us now take a time to raise the prayers that we hold deep in our hearts to the Lord as we pray now in a time of silence. Lord God, you hold us close and fill us with great hope for a new day. Hear our prayers and bless us in all of our need. Lord, we pray for all students, teachers, and staff as everyone begins a new school year in these recent and upcoming days. Lord, we also pray for our Sunday school, our music program, and all ministries that kick off for this fall season. We continue to pray for unity and understanding all across the U.S., Lord, and that we may, each of us, be a voice for peace together. We pray for all impacted by the recent shooting in Georgia. Lord, we continue to pray your blessings beyond baby Skylar Rose Hyde, John and Bonnie Hyde's granddaughter, following the date of her baptism on August 18th. We pray for the family of Steve Erno as he passed to his eternal rest in you suddenly just a few days ago. Lord, we continue to pray for the family of Larry Hamill, Diane Wallen's brother, as he passed to his eternal rest in you suddenly on August 10th. We pray for Joshua Foster Tucker as he faces challenges with chronic pain at this time. We continue to pray for Bob Berger as he recovers from recent falls. 
We pray for Barb Miller as she continues her recovery from a recent bout of COVID and hospital stays and give thanks to see her here today. Lord, we pray for Mike Newbert and give you thanks for the recent news of his heart transplant surgery. Lord, we know that Mike is uh, Colleen uh, Foster's nephew, and we've been praying for him and for his family as he uh, battled a long-term heart condition and was just recently able to undergo a heart transplant surgery. We give you thanks and we continue to pray for Mike and his family as he now enters a time of recovery. Lord, we continue to pray for Kathy Blackburn, Blackburn's nephews, Bob Williams and uh, Kip Tebow, uh, as they were both recently diagnosed with stage four cancers. And Lord, we give you thanks for the recent good news uh, of Bob's uh, positive response to treatment, Lord. But we also pray for Kathy Blackmer's brother, Jerry Tebow, as he recovers now from another recent heart attack. Lord, we pray for David Fecht, Michelle Fecht's son, as he has had a recent cancer diagnosis and will undergo a surgery tomorrow. Lord, we pray blessings on and offer our congratulations to Harrison Foster and Juliana Berea on the news of their recent engagement. And also pray your blessings on Hunter Simino and his fiance Fallon on the news of their recent engagement. Lord, we continue to pray for the Reverend Dr. Stu Merkel, Senior Pastor of Faith Community Church in Franklin, Wisconsin, as he recovers from a recent stomach surgery. We continue to pray for the family of Carolyn Neer, Lord, Susan Brown's sister, Paul Brown's sister-in-law, and the daughter of Jim and Barb Miller, as she passed to her eternal rest in you suddenly on February 22nd. Lord, we pray for all your people in harm's way. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and for all those impacted by the Israel-Gaza war and that all war may come to an end. Lord, we give thanks for and wish happy birthdays to Neil Joyner, who celebrated this week, and to Sandy Terry, who celebrates today. We pray anniversary blessings beyond Dave and Gail McKillop, who celebrated this past week. And we raise all these prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The offering for the work of this church will now be received. Uh, as a reminder, today's special offering for Rally Sunday has been designated to property. Uh, if you would like to give to the special offering, you may list special offering on the memo line of a check or an online gift. Uh, and if you choose to continue to give to your, your annual pledge today, you may do so as well. Uh, for those who uh, have given electronically, you may use one of the yellow cards in your pew rack and put it in the plate as it is passed.
Let us pray. Lord God, loving God, Lord, all that we say and do comes from you. Lord, we ask that you may now bless these, our gifts, that they may encourage yet more of your people to live out your call to love, as unique as that may look to all of us, Lord, with all of our unique gifts. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name for the glory of your coming kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. We ask that God now open our hearts and our minds and bring us even more present to the word as we witness to it in the gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 30, in a passage where we hear a couple of challenging things. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. And when she went home, she found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. This is the gospel message of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In order for any of us or anything to be healed, well, there first must be something in need of healing. Something, place, or even someone suffering, facing challenges, pain, brokenness, disconnection, you name it. Something cannot be healed if it is not in need of healing. But in order to be healed, we must know what the challenges actually are from those who are experiencing them. This calls us to be present. We need to be present. We need to learn how we may be part of healing. And we need to be willing to act. This morning we have a story of healing, a challenging story of healing, from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus encounters the Syrophoenician woman who begs for him to remove the demon from her daughter. 
we see that Jesus has here left the land of the Jewish people. He's somewhere else in the region. Having come into greater conflict with the Pharisees and the scribes, well, Jesus has made his way to the region of Tyre and Sidon in Syrian Phoenicia. He's now among the Gentiles of the Northeast. He's in a different place. Upon hearing the desperate request of the Syrophoenician woman, Jesus provides an answer which has really perplexed scholars for centuries. He tells her, first let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. This is such a shocking response. It's probably not one of those verses that will be on a decoration in our home or on your pillow, right? Did Jesus really refer to this woman as a dog? Even as, he, as she is expressing her faith in him and making an appeal to his mercy, to his power, to heal her daughter who is in great need. Was he referring to her kind, the Gentiles, as dogs? A too quick read through this passage may give us a bit of a shock. What does Jesus mean, and what are we to make of it? After all, he does end up granting her request just a little while later. Jesus heals the daughter. We must remember that Jesus was with Gentile people in the Gentile community in this passage. Not considered by others to be among the chosen or uh, favored community. Well, Gentiles were outsiders, really. So here in our passage in Mark, Jesus is with people who are considered to be on the outside from the perspective of those who are chosen. Well, calling someone, anyone, a dog was as insulting back then as it would be today. In the days of Jesus' earthly ministry, people in the community, they would eat with their hands and what would happen, scholars show us, is they'd wipe off their hands with bread after finishing their meals and then toss the bread, that bread that you know, they used on their hands, to the house dogs. This is a common practice. We remind ourselves that dogs at that time were not granted the same pet or best friend status that we think of in our American households. And we also know that that's not the same everywhere around the world either, for that matter. But certainly not here in this passage. So Jesus says that the children should eat first. And then, and only then, can the dogs eat. And the last thing we want to do is to put words into Jesus' mouth here. So we have to wrestle with this. We have to wrestle with this difficult passage. Does Jesus mean that the children represent all children? Does he mean the children of Israel, the favored, the chosen? When he says that the dogs must eat after the children, indeed, might he be getting at something deeper, something that calls us closer? It's worth considering if Jesus is even being serious here in this passage, or might he even be kidding a bit? When we consider this often in Scripture, we don't always have a picture of the look 
on people's faces. We don't have a picture of what Jesus looks like when he said this. Is Jesus or the gospel author using symbolism to make a point? Is Jesus impatient with the Syrophoenician woman? And in her reply, that even dogs eat the scraps from the children's table, does this woman impact Jesus? Or is this some form of rhetorical teaching device? Something meant for us as readers? We must consider whether this passage is meant as a metaphor, a symbol of some kind. Something which either Jesus or the author of the gospel is trying to show us. Something we're called to witness from it, in it. As we see when we consider the vast witness of Scripture, from the Hebrew Bible all the way into Revelation, we're called to care for those who are disenfranchised and oppressed in the world. We're called to bring healing into the needs around us. And we also remind ourselves that biblical healing is not characterized by what we think of as fixing something or assimilating uh, to any cultural norm. But really, biblical healing is about restoration and often, as we see with Jesus, about a radical welcome, one that people are not really prepared for. Jesus doesn't fix people. His healing renews and restores. In the book of Proverbs, Proverb 22 tells us that whether we are rich or poor, the Lord is maker of us all. It also tells us that we are not to exploit the poor and that the Lord will take up their case. James 2, which we heard only a few moments ago, shows us that we are not to show favoritism or any deference to those who may be perceived to have more than other people. Our passage in James also reminds us that we are called to lean into, to lean actively into mercy over judgment. This is not a common trait of our broader culture. <laughs> However, having mercy, if we really think about it, having mercy is actually an informed choice, isn't it? Having mercy is an informed choice that we actively participate in. One cannot be passively merciful. That's just not paying attention. James reminds us that we're called to action. It's something we do. We do not sit on the sidelines idly. We witness to the need that is before us. When we return to Jesus' exchange with the Syrophoenician woman in, in light of this, we must not neglect to read through to what really appears to be the all-important conclusion. Jesus heals the daughter. Through or even despite her outsider status, the Syrophoenician woman has faith. Even if we don't really understand it. No matter what the world may say of her, Jesus can and Jesus does heal her daughter. This is but one, one example of really the danger of taking scriptural passages or very brief excerpts wholly out of context and also out of the broader witness of the scriptural canon. When we do things like that, 
scholars call it cherry picking. When, when we cherry pick, likely what we're doing is we're trying to get to the answer quickly. We want to get something done. We want to figure it out quickly. When we do that, things can seem to take on meanings that perhaps are not intended. Of course, this can skew our view, our interpretation in any time, in any place, to say nothing of how such an approach, if done broadly, regularly, impacts our worldview, our behavior, and our collective action in the world. Scripture always, if we look at the broad witness, it always calls us closer. It calls us closer in to explore more deeply the rich meaning for us, for our communities, may often leave us with more questions than answers. And we see that depth, that rich meaning here in Mark, in a passage which could easily be taken to suggest things that it clearly doesn't really seem to be saying to us if taken out of context. In this shocking gospel passage, we witness to the great faith, the surprising faith, of an outsider. Who would expect great faith like this to come in such a way? And yet we do see things like this happen elsewhere. We see it all throughout the Gospels. We see it even in the book of Jonah. When he tries to run away from reaching out to people considered on the outside and they turn to faith as he hides. Did Jesus in this passage, maybe purposely even, make that biting remark about dogs to get our attention, to draw us in, to see if we're paying attention. It seems to suggest that the world, or though the world, may characterize some of us as lower than others, here we're invited to consider how each and every one of us is a child of God, and that we may abide together in Jesus. We're called to love one another. Indeed, suffer for one another. As any who have ever or will ever love know it's not easy. No matter where we come from, Gentile or Jew, rich or poor, we see in the scripture that God's kingdom has space for all of us. It's not an old rule that makes us pure. It's not our reasoning mind alone that makes us pure. It's not who we are, where we come from, or what the world may deem of us, which makes us pure. All are welcome in faith, and all may be renewed, restored, be healed, even in surprising ways. Jesus Christ is a healer. He brings about healing through all kinds of challenges. And he does so in solidarity with all people, people often that the world has forgotten, that the world has abandoned, as when he does with the good thief on the cross when the world could not have abandoned him anymore. Jesus is connected to those often considered on the outside. On the outside, from the viewpoint of those who claim to have power. Jesus casts out demons from afar and heals the wounded spirit. But that's not all he heals. Jesus is the healer of all things, of the entire world, and invites us, welcomes us to join in that healing work of love. 
We're active participants in this healing, not to fix people who are not like us, not to assimilate bodies, disabled bodies or minds, to conform to any cultural expectation of so-called normal ones, not to give people what we think we have, as if this is all about what they are missing, but to witness to the needs of those around us, whatever that may be, including all people, all creation, the very world we live, we breathe, and we die in together. To witness such needs is not to force ourselves to assimilate to any one expectation or custom. It's to be present to what form of healing is needed, and to open ourselves up to be the love of Jesus into that healing, in that moment, whatever it may cost us. Though we may wrestle with his teachings and all that they mean for us, we have faith that Jesus brings us to healing and renewal even if it may not be easy for us along the way. Jesus calls us to love one another, to care for the widow, the orphan, the outsider, any and all who are disenfranchised and oppressed. Christ calls on us to perhaps trade our approach to reason for the loving, restoring, healing will of God. Not that we take tiny passages of scripture out of context to suit what we want, but that we might be led by the Spirit together as united people to follow in the ways of the Lord as unique as we all are. Jesus calls us to fellowship. He calls us to him in freedom. And the Lord Jesus calls us in and through faith that all may be restored, all may be renewed, and that all will be healed. May we be part of that great healing in Christ together. May it be so. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing our ascending hymn, number 45. There's a wideness in God's mercy.
Friends, as a reminder, all are welcome to join us for a special time of fun, food, fellowship, and an all-ages cornhole tournament following worship this Rally Sunday. Many thanks again to Sherilyn and to Colleen for helping us put together this special day. And now, may the God of all love bless you, keep you, hold you close through all seasons in life, and send you into the world to share the healing love of Jesus with and in all you meet in the world. Go now to love and serve in Jesus' name. Amen.